Let's look at another one. I almost brought my skateboard in here to demonstrate this next one. I'm just kidding. I could not skateboard. My life depended on it. <clears throat> All right. But what if we had a 60 kilogram skateboarder coasting down the circular track? If he starts from rest when theta is equal to zero, determine the magnitude of the normal reaction. The truck exerts on him when theta is equal to 60. Neglect his size for the calculation. When we say neglect his size, that's just telling us we can think about this as a point. We can assume that all the forces are acting straight through the point. Uh, in a month or so, we'll talk about rigid bodies where we have to really look at forces and moments and things like that, but we can just neglect his size. So he's a, a, a particle, right? This is particle kinetics. He's a particle right there. Um, and we want to determine the magnitude of the normal force, right? We want to determine the magnitude of the normal force right here. So let's draw a free body diagram of this skateboarder. All right, should I draw the free body diagram only for 60 degrees? You know, he, he starts up here. I could draw the free body diagram up there. I could draw the free body diagram down at 60 degrees. Or maybe I can just draw the free body diagram at some angle, any angle, right? Let's draw a free body diagram that would work at the beginning, at the end, uh, anywhere we are. So what forces are acting on here? Uh, we've got the weight, 60, 9.81. We've got the normal force of the track pushing up on him. I'm not going to have any friction uh, because it's not like he's skidding down here. He's roller, blade, roller skating with wheels. And if we've got really good wheels, and if they are, let's say, massless or weightless wheels compared to all the other horses, in this class, we can just assume that those wheels are uh, frictionless, right? We can assume that there's no friction right here. It's almost like he's sliding down a smooth surface, okay? So, I think that's, those are the only forces we have acting on here. Let's define the normal and tangential direction. That free body diagram, go back to that racetrack, that race car. It looks exactly the same. But this is very, very different. Where, where, where's the normal direction for this free body diagram? Into the curve. Into the curve. Right, so my normal direction is here. Visualize it, draw your normal direction right there. Uh, let me define theta. If theta is the angle from there, how would that show up in my free body diagram? That would be that angle. I, I, I just drew like a Z type of thing. You could draw some angles. You know, figure things out. And so let's see here. There's normal. Here's tangential. So this kind of theta, beta, theta, beta is make sure I got that. Yeah. And beta would just be the complementary angle of theta. All right, so now I am ready to sum the forces in the normal direction and sum the forces tangential. So sum the forces in the normal direction in minus 60, 9.81, and the, that component sine theta equals M times A normal. A normal is V squared over rho. Uh, V is changing, starting from rest, but that rho is not changing, so I can plug that in right there. And summing the forces tangential would be 69.81 cosine theta equals m a tangential. Is that zero? No, it, that's his speeding up or slowing down. He started from rest. I think he's getting faster. Uh, he is speeding up right there. All right. So let me figure out this. Let me answer the question. 
determine n when theta is equal to 60. That's all it's asking. Determine n when theta is equal to 60. Well, my first instinct is, okay, well, let me look at that equation. Let me plug in theta is equal to 60. Uh, but, but here's the problem. I don't know the velocity when theta is equal to 60. How can we find the velocity? Well, maybe hop on over to our tangential part of the problem and figure out the acceleration. And then many times from the acceleration, we can find the velocity. Is this acceleration, the first thing, I think I can divide this 60 out. Is that acceleration constant? No. Is that acceleration constant? No. That acceleration is 9.81 cosine theta. And theta is going from 0 to 60. So I cannot use constant acceleration equations to, to from, from that acceleration in order to get the velocity. So what should I do? Integrate. Absolutely. Integrate. Hop on over to our uh, formula sheet, and we've got two options, dv equals integral a dt or v dv equals integral a ds. But this is not in terms of t. It's not in terms of s. It's in terms of theta. So what do we do? Do you think theta is related to s? Theta is related to s. Maybe, right? So, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this integral. I can't integrate it with respect to s, but I could integrate it with respect to theta. Theta is related to s. Let's real briefly show this. Here, that would be s, the arc length, s. And here is theta. What's the definition of arc length? S equals rho theta. And so it turns out that ds is, let's real quickly, it's almost like taking the derivative, d rho theta plus rho d theta. And it turns out that this d rho, well, first of all, my rho is not changing. So it's, it's obviously zero in this problem. Even in problems where your rho is changing, that term right there that I'm, I'm setting to zero, I'm neglecting, is um, a very, very, very small, smaller term. The rho d theta is higher order magnitude. So here you go for most any problem where your theta is related to your, I can say integral of a rho d theta. All right. I can integrate, and that probably won't be on our formula sheet. You've got to know that ds is the same thing as rho d theta. All right, so let's do this. Integral v dv equals integral of 9.81 cosine theta rho. So don't forget about this rho, and this rho is just 4. Uh, so do you mind if I just multiply, you know, 4, 9.81 cosine theta d theta. This one, v squared over 2, v final minus v initial. I think it did start from rest. And here, uh, so whatever 4 times 9.81 is, integral of cosine theta, positive sine theta. And this is going, we're going from a theta of 0 to a theta of 60. All right, I'm going to try to Put this on one page, but but do you see what we did there? And you see why? Don't don't go ahead and plug 60 in right here and say that your tangential acceleration is I don't know 7.4. It's not a constant, so you got to take an integral and go back and wait until after you take the integral. Now you can plug in 60. All right, and I've got v of 8.24. So I probably should box that in. What I really needed, I needed to plug that in up there. Now I can find at 60 degrees in, oh, sorry, 1,529 newtons. 1,529 newtons. Was that cool? <coughs> I thought it was.
All right, but step back and look at what we did. Free body diagram, defined our axes. Sum of forces in normal equals ma normal. Sum of forces tangential equals ma tangential. We needed to, we needed that velocity and we had to hop over to tangential in order to figure out, we had to integrate this time in order to figure out the um, velocity so we could plug it back in up there.